Hello, everybody. I'm Darren Powderly. Welcome back to Street Beats. Uh, today, I'm joined by Mr. Christopher Mfume, and I am really pleased to have Chris with us today. Chris is a managing partner with CLD Partners in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Chris, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, just your story. Tell us how you got into real estate. Sure, Darren. Thanks for having me today. Um, I'd say my, uh, my interest in real estate really started when I moved to Washington, D.C. following college. Uh, I was working in the Navy Yard, which is an area that experienced just massive growth. It's the most dense neighborhood, residential neighborhood in D.C. actually right now. So I was able to see that firsthand, and I decided that it was an industry that I really wanted to be a part of. I then went and uh, persistently pursued uh, the largest developer in my hometown of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, it was a boutique firm, which was super important because I was hands-on in the whole process. There was about a six-person development team total, 12-person company altogether. So following that, uh, at the age of 27, I went to go start my own company, uh, CLD Partners. And uh, we partnered with a local private equity investor who manages about a billion dollars worth of capital on our first projects. And that experience was really instrumental in broadening my understanding of the finance aspect of the business. I was able to really see the inner workings of how to make a deal, how to find a deal, and how to finance it effectively. That's awesome. So it sounds like three uh, main chapters of your career to date. Uh, let's go back to the first one. You mentioned persistence. I mean, obviously, we want to talk about you know, entrepreneurship here. We want to talk about some of the, the themes that allow or, or sort of are necessary for entrepreneurs to succeed. And we definitely want to talk about what it's like to be, you know, black in, in today's, you know, real estate industry, in, t in today's entrepreneurial environment. And, but yet this was already a little ways ago. So, so tell us a little bit about how you actually broke into the real estate industry uh, through persistence and what that adventure was like. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's actually a great story. So I have been searching for opportunities in commercial real estate and I got a ton of no's. Um, if you've ever talked to somebody about real estate development, it's a very high barrier to entry um, business. One, because it's capital intensive. And then two, because you normally need a ton of experience in order to do it. So right. I wanted to go straight to development and maybe it was hubris. I don't know what it was, but I thought I could get it done. Um, I got laughed out of a couple rooms. Uh, but eventually I was able to find Michael. So the story is I went to an event uh, that he was speaking at. I pulled him aside after the event. I told him I wanted to learn more about the business. Um, and I ended up meeting him in his office. I walked through all the current projects he was working on and I immediately just fell in love with it. I knew it was for me. I knew it was a perfect balance of creativity, um, analytical ability, uh, community relations. There's just so many different aspects of the business that the business touches um, that was interesting. Uh, you mentioned the African-American piece. I think it's particularly close to me because I'm big on entrepreneurship. As far back as I can remember, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Uh, originally, it was car dealerships. You know, as soon as I graduated from school, I started looking into that. I was like, nah, maybe that's not exactly what I want to do. And I land on real estate development and uh, it's been a perfect fit. What led you to decide to go out and, and, and start your own company at 27? I mean, obviously at 27 year old, you have some experience and you know, you're probably you know, feeling like you can take on the world, but boy, that's a brave move at 27 years old. Tell us a little bit about what led to you, know, you to be able to make that move. The way I've really structured my career is that I've mapped out successful entrepreneurs in the past. So I've looked at Stephen Ross, uh, Sam Zell, Barry Sternlicht, uh, Don Peebles, um, Robert Smith, just a ton of entrepreneurs that I've really looked at how they've done it. That's what I did. And I started mapping out their journeys. And I looked at, okay, how did they get to where, where they got to? And I started working backwards. So I said, if this is my goal, what do I need to do now in order to get to that point? What age did they hop out there? And I said, okay, 27 seems to be the age. Uh, Stephen Ross is 27, Don Peoples is 27. I said, I'm going to do it at 27. And no matter what, I'm going to do it at 27. Um, so I, I decided to do it at 27 and uh, kind of figure it out as I, as I went along and it was worthwhile. I, I grew so much within that period um, to really be able to get to the point where I am now where I feel like I finally have a hold, a 
of everything and we can really pursue larger projects. So we're scaling up every project at this point. Yeah, great, great example. What's it like developing in Baltimore right now? It's your hometown and you know, you've worked with uh, some big developers in Baltimore. You're a sole proprietor at one point. Personally, I hear two stories uh, kind of like, one is that there's great improvements going on. There's, you know, employment, you know, growth uh, in, in certain sectors and industries, right? Uh, I hear wonderful things about Baltimore. And then, and then I also hear th some of the, you know, obviously some of the more negative press. What's it like on the ground right now in Baltimore, identifying opportunities and taking the risk, uh, putting your own money to work as a developer and the money of, you know, some of your LP investors? The big key to developing in Baltimore, I would say, is meds and eds. Our growth, our employment growth is really driven by our anchor institutions. And so what we try to do is invest as close to those anchor institutions as possible. The quality of life in Baltimore is unmatched. I lived in DC before this, and I actually just had some friends in D from DC down last night. I took them out on the waterfront, really showed them around. They said, wow, I didn't know all this was here. And I didn't know this quality of life existed. I love it here. Um, I love urban life. I love being close to amenities, and that's another thing that we really look for when we're choosing sites. We try to develop in the path of progress. And the other great thing about Baltimore is that you can find really unique opportunities to buy land at a low land basis if you know the market. Where do you see these, some of the opportunities uh, going, going forward? Like what's, what's coming up next uh, in Baltimore as well as with your business? Sure, so we, we invest in Baltimore and DC right now. So we're, we're looking at both of these markets. And I think that right now, it's a little bit of wait and see in terms of newer projects. So we are trying to understand really what COVID means. Luckily for us, um, all of our projects are development. And uh, so we're talking about either 10 months or 24 months out, between 10 and 24 months out. And so I do think that the world will look a lot different in 24 months. Oh yeah. I do not believe that sellers have adjusted their expectations on price based on what's going on. I've actually seen the opposite. So they've held their pricing strong, whereas all the buyers are looking for some type of COVID discount mm -hmm. um, when, they're, when they're purchasing an asset. And I don't think that those two things will be aligned for another six to 12 months at least. Within that six to 12 months though, I am eager, eager, eager to find some opportunities because I do think that we were due for a correction. You know, COVID came along, but if you were following the market, you knew that we were there already. And so we started right. hunkering down way before that because we were expecting some type of down, downturn. So we've, we've made sure all of our assets, one, were bought at a great land basis. Um, two, we're located in great neighborhoods. And three, we're, were flexible in terms of how they could be used in a post COVID environment. So we have desks in all our new units. We, have, we actually have desks, we did this before, but we have desks within our new units so yeah. that people can work from home efficiently. We have, co, we have co working spaces or co working type spaces that are really designed and modeled after we work so that you have efficient places to work during the day. Uh, some days I decide not to come to the office and I'll work in my apartment, which has a we work like space. And I really like that. I said, you know what? I'm going to start incorporating that into all my projects from now on. And so we are making those type of changes and adjustments. And uh, we think that we'll have a great response from the market because of it. Good. Good. Great to hear. Well, Chris, is there is there anything that you'd like to sort of uh, in closing some closing thoughts about you know, um, you know, diversity, um, equity, inclusiveness in, in the real estate industry. I think that for a long time, I've seen uh, notes on diversity. I've seen intents on diversity, but I have not seen uh, measurable results and I haven't seen adjustments based on performance. And I think that if we really, really want to make a change, we need to set measurable goals within all levels of the country. Of, of companies, including the C-suites. Uh, Willie Walker was a great example of that on the Walker webcast. I saw that he actually set priorities within his executive team. He said, you know, I want women and minorities represented within my executive team. I thought that was important. And he said that I'm going to revisit it every quarter and, and see where we are and, you know, make adjustments as needed. And I think that that's important. So if you really 
and tend to do things. And entrepreneurs, we get stuff done. You know, we do when we want to do something, when something is a priority, it gets done. And right. so I think we need to use that, that same vigor and that same excitement um, towards the diversity, towards increasing diversity as well. You know, we're together in this journey to create a, a more diverse and equitable and inclusive uh, business universe, especially here in the commercial real estate world. So, Chris, thanks again for joining us today on Street Beats. Really appreciate it. And we will be talking with you soon. Thanks a lot, Darren. Talk to you soon.